All right, everybody. Lights switch back on as well to make the room nice and bright for your next presenter. This is our last presentation before we have a morning tea break and another chance to do some networking and catching up. And it's a, it's a repeat performance. Some would say it's an encore. Um, can I please get you to make him feel very welcome presenting on the Eco School Program? It's Haymore Shobar from uh, Keep Australia Beautiful NT. And you want this microphone? I came prepared. Uh, please put your hands together and welcome Haymore, everybody. All right, testing, good. Okay, uh, again, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians on the land on which we are gathered here today, the Larrakia people. And I'd like to thank uh, Legant, the Local Government Association of the Northern Territory and Meredith for allowing me to, to speak today. So thank you very much. Um, just on the topic that we had before with uh, West Arnhem, um, in the good old days, before container deposit legislation, our group, um, we used to get the free backload and we were getting it from about 55 communities. Uh, we we're with um, the old BIAC Packaging Stewardship Forum. I think they're now called APCO. And we used to give the truckies the get to heaven tokens. They used to cost us $6 and they're about the size of a 50 cent piece. And they used to love it. They used to fight for it. I used to be able to get backloading like you wouldn't believe. And the barges, we used to give them the um, green and gold kangaroo plaque to put on their barge as community services appreciation. And it was a rip off of the Qantas logo. <laughs> we got away with it. But we used to pull a lot out of the Northern Territory. And what was so sad um, is when the container deposit came in, we realized we were called up to a couple of the trucking or transport people, the barge people. And they said, you've got one year. Um, you either cease in one year's time, or you have to put these beverage containers in a container that can go on our trucks and our barges. <clears throat> and I was like, what? And, and in those days, when the container deposit system started, you couldn't compact the beverage containers. And they said, you have to remember, Hamel, our core business as transport into these communities, the barges and the trucks, is delivering food. To remain Aquis accredited, we can't have backloading of beverage containers with yeast and mould, ants and cockroaches, rats and mice. If anything comes back, we have to scrub and sanitise the back of our truck or our barge. So as of 12 months from now, if you want a backload, it's got to be in a sealed container so we can't contaminate our transport. Be aware of that. The Aquis accredited, their core business is food. That was the dilemma we faced. Anyway, um, <clears throat> again, guys, I'm hearing some things. I'm getting a little bit frustrated. I'm funded by the Environment Department to provide you a free service. I'm a non-for-profit. I'm not political. If you're trying to achieve anything in your communities, you may be seen as political because 50% of the people may love your councillors and the other 50% may not. I'm no threat. This brand is no threat to anybody. So if you want to achieve some behavioural changes in your community, that's what I'm here for, number one. Number two, I link your community key stakeholders. If we're going to achieve anything in your communities, it doesn't matter if it's Darwin or if it's Umbacumba. I link your council, their objectives, with the store, with the school, with the Aboriginal Association, the ranges, and so forth. All right? That's what I do. I don't have the money to travel. I had to say to Tiwi, sorry, I can't get there now. I'm already in the red. My board are going to kill me. I have to do it the next financial year. But Demed, Demed come in, they pick me up here, and they take me all the way out to West Arnhem. And I spend time in all their homelands. Then they drop me back off. I'm not a fee for service. I'm free. So please use me. All right, schools. Like I said, in a community, our role as a community-based organisation is to get the behavioural changes going. So we work with the council, the school, the store, 
the rangers, the Aboriginal associations, and we all work together on a common goal. The schools, when you want to do a clean, when you want to focus on waste or litter or recycling, water conservation, we get the schools on board with our program, and it's called Eco School. The Eco School program is a global program under United Nations and costs nothing. Our good friends from Mars and Wrigley Foundation fund the program globally, corporate social responsibility, which doesn't exist in the Northern Territory, but that's another issue. And they also fund the $110 registration fee in, in the Northern Territory. And every now and again, they'll phone me up and say, hey, Mo, here's 5,000, give it to the schools. You can't skim any off, Hamel, but you can give it to the schools. So good on them. All right. Um, and feel free to ask any questions as we go along. So the Eco School program. Okay. We link it to our Sustainable Communities Tidy Towns program. So when you say that you want to be in the program and you want to set new standards and norms in your communities, we say to the store, okay, council, here's your plans. Store, here's your plans. School, here's your program. And this is it. Okay, like I said, it's linked to United Nations and this is the way it goes. United Nations has many agencies and I report to the UNESCO, which is United Nations uh, education, science, culture, organization. United Nations has a goal. They want every school in the world to teach the students about environment and sustainability. I cop a lot of flack from United Nations about Australia. And I keep telling them I can't change anything. I cop a lot of flack from them because we don't have sustainability as a core subject. Our schools are teaching Chinese but not teaching sustainability. It's incorporated. It's, um, oh, what's it called? Anyway, it's incorporated into their main study. So with maths. So what they do is they say one piece of rubbish plus one piece of rubbish equals too much rubbish. So it's integrated into their core subjects. So UNESCO and FEE, which is a federal... Um, federal education, environmental education is global. They're institutional partners and they deliver the Eco School program globally. Keep Australia beautiful. We've got the license in Australia, about $30,000 a year. That's why we charge $110 registration a year to make that up. But in the Northern Territory, Mars and Wrigley are picking that one up. And Eco Schools is the largest global program, school program, sustainability program in the world. It's about 80 countries, maybe more now. I think these figures are all from 2019. So in the Northern Territory, so in the world, there's 20 million students roughly, maybe more now. In the Northern Territory, we have 60 schools. So Darwin. If you've got any objectives, if you want to focus on your new landfill site, you've got schools here that are registered. Litchfield, you're the same. Alice Springs, Catherine. You've got schools in your areas, in your council areas, that are eco schools, and all we have to do is link them to what your goals are. Now, we do that with the remote communities, and that's litter, recycling, waste management, separation, and then we go into food security and those sort of things. So the whole program has got two arms. It's, it's got academic benefits for the students, but as a business unit, there's benefits for the school as a business unit. So it's all about getting the, teacher, uh, the students engaged, participating. It helps their reading, their maths, technology skills, science skills, all that. But on the other side of the operation, the school as a business, every year as the new students come through, they're reviewing their energy 
consumption, their water consumption, their litter, and their waste, which is a fantastic little model. Because sustainability is all about science and it's practical and it's hands-on and it's discussions, the kids enjoy it a lot more. It's not sitting down and writing and the teacher telling. It's the people, the students participating. So in terms of the learning and the retention, we're in this area here where they're discussing, practicing and teaching and they enjoy it. So that's our Santa Teresa people. The key features of the program is like I say, it's student led. There's that collaboration with uh, um, international schools. We've got one desert school talking to a snow school. So they learn about energy consumption, how they deal with waste, all that sort of stuff. There's the seven pathways and themes. And we'll talk about those themes later on. Themes is like a category. So sustainable communities, tidy towns, waste, litter, recycling, energy, water, uh, uh, culture. Seven step framework, we'll go through it. And at the end of the year, we cycle, all our programs are annual. And at the end of the year, we give the awards through our Sustainable Communities Tidy Towns program and then accreditation. Now the accreditation, bronze and silver, a national level accreditation. The green flag is global accreditation under the United Nations. All right, we've got two schools in the Northern Territory that have reached that status, Nightcliff Primary and Parap. So the most seven of the, the with discussions with United Nations was Australia focus on these themes, categories, whatever you want to call it. Water, healthy lifestyles, energy, climate, biodiversity, litter and waste, waste and waterways, fair go. So they're the seven categories or themes that the Eco School's working on. And at the start of the year, I had Nari Arkit ask us to introduce another theme that's called Global Citizen. It's about morals and values. So it, through the school curriculum, teaches the, the students, the kids, morals and values at a, national, at a local level, at a national level and a global level. So um, yeah, we'll see how we go. Again, the whole program is United Nations based and it's focused on achieving the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. We've had successful discussions with the Charles Darwin University about their Master of Business course to incorporate the reporting against the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals as well as the 2030 and 2050 targets for Australia. But these are the goals that the Eco School Work Program works towards. But these goals, we can link to your community, to your council objectives, particularly when it comes to waste management. No problems. And that's what we do. When we get a new school signing up, because litter is our core business, we steer them towards litter. Get the kids to put the rubbish in the bin, get that under control. Good, you've got that under control, and there goes the recycling. Get them to put that in that bin and that in that bin. And then they go on to normally energy or biodiversity. So the steps are, we're just engaging, encouraging. We want to foster the change. And trust me, the biggest change agent you have in any of your councils, regardless of whether you're Umba Kumba or Darwin, are your students. You've got a whole army out there because they're the ones that learn, they take it home, and they change mum and dad's attitude. They're brothers and sisters. They're a huge change agent. The people with anti-smoking, why they don't do an ad where the daughter goes up to the dad and says, daddy, 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 please stop smoking with a few tears in her eyes. That's a no-brainer. That would make me think, maybe I should stop smoking. The students are the biggest change agent you have in your communities. 
So the steps is basically pretty straightforward. They form an eco committee, which is a new leadership group for the students as well as teachers. So it's predominantly 50-50, teachers and students. They carry out an environmental review. We've got all the templates on site for them on the, on the website. You start now. You put the stick in the sand. Where is that now? How much litter is there? How much rubbish is there? How much do you recycle? Do you recycle? Um, all that sort of stuff. What's your energy? What's your consumption? What's your water consumption? Start now. You monitor everything now. And then at the end of the year, review it. So like I said, all the templates, basically this is a lot like the Tidy Towns Sustainable Communities um, judging sheets. They're all values. And when you've got a value on the bottom, you can see whether you're going up or down or improving or not. Again, pretty sort of basic stuff. The schools are collecting their own data. How much kilograms or volume is going into landfill? How much of it's being recovered? They do their bin audits. It's amazing the amount of food that they <laughs> throw out the kids for what's, uh, what's quite interesting is Parat Primary School has had on a number of occasions no bin days and they're working towards having no bins at all, which is really good. A lot of our schools, um, th th they have the kids eat the lunch, they put it in, a, well, all the scraps go into a special bin, a little bin, like a, pa a waste paper basket, then it goes into the chook with the chickens or goats or whatever it's that they have. We had one school here that had cow, a cow eating all the food. Well, you know, it's, it's, yeah, yeah. I mean, they do the, the kids do the review on their waste. They're big skip bins. How many bins, are, how full are they when they get emptied? You know, a couple of the schools made the recommendation. We got the skip bins, you're paying per lift. They're only half full. Change it from three days a week to two days a week and save the money. So we've, that's the sort of thing that goes on. Um, an action plan, templates are on the site there. If they want it, great. If they don't, that's all right. It's up to them. Monitor and evaluate. They have to link it to the curriculum. Like I said, it's integrated learning in Australia. I think we're about the only country left that has it. All the other countries have sustainability as a, a core subject. Um, so we use sciences, maths, literacy. Art. Inform, this is a big part. You want accreditation, you have to inform the general community. So schools are a bit funny on this one. And I, I sort of suspect that the education department or the Northern Territory um, I'm not too sure where they stand on this one, but we've had instances. Okay, as an organisation, we believe that a school not only educates the kids, but it should be educating the wider community that they're in. In our remote communities, if you're teaching the kids about litter and recycling, we expect you to, to show that, display that, and encourage that in the parents. So I remember in, we had one community where the principal was like, he was just not a team player. And I got so upset about it. My board wrote a letter to the Minister of uh, Education in the Northern Territory. And I see he's still principal three years later. So I'm not too sure where the Northern Territory government stands on this one. But for where we stand, we believe that a school should be putting back and educating the community that they're in. And if you want to get the accreditation under this program, that's what you have to do. So if a council says they want to have a clean community and you help support that, you get your accreditation. If a council says they've got a new landfill, they want to recycle and you help that, then you get your accreditation. All right? Mind you, that's global. This is not just a, a KAB thing. This is the United Nations Federation. To get their accreditation, a school has to work within their community. So some of the things that are happening around Darwin, um, you know, there's waste reduction. They've got their recycling going. A lot of schools are doing this. They have to produce what we call an eco code. It's a bit of a mantra that they go by. So perhaps says less pollution is the best solution. 
and they got their global accreditation in 2019. That's perhaps they were the second one. But we don't have a problem if you guys as a council want to follow this sort of thing and say, let's keep Barunga beautiful, or let's keep Umbacumba beautiful or something like that. If you have a little catchphrase like that, a code, a mantra like that, um, we don't have a problem with that. And that might help the community work towards one set goal. Um, some of them do rap songs. This is a rap song. Again, like I said, we give the awards under the Northern Territory Awards at the end of the year. We cycle from January to November. In November, we give the recognition and acknowledgement. The schools get two awards. We get the Clean Green Healthy School Award, which is linked to Eco Schools. The other award is the Sustainable Community Tidy Towns Award, and that's aimed at the remote communities. So we're giving them a pat on the back, reset, start again next year. Bronze and silver, they're Australian national awards. So if you focus on litter in one year and you meet our criteria that's set out by UN, you get bronze accreditation. In the second year, if you do litter and recycling, as set out by the criteria by your UN, you get silver accreditation. In the third year, if you do litter, recycling and water conservation, then you get the, glow, the, the, the green flag and you can fly it at your school. And the United Nations puts a little red dot there. So like I say, I think that was, um, yeah, that was perhaps getting their green flag accreditation. So some of the community outcomes is like I say, reducing waste, diverting it, reducing waste into landfill, diversions and all that sort of thing. But also creating that awareness amongst the students like I said, United Nations goal is to have every school in the world teaching about sustainability. The goal is that tomorrow's managers, our future managers, have already got some idea about the sustainability consequences of their decision that they've made. Same with safety. So that's what they're trying to aim at. We've got um, grants. So we give out grants through this. Again, Mars Wrigley. They put a lot of money towards it. These are some of the teachers' lessons plans. They're all on the resources. Uh, initially, you had to be a member, a registered member to access the resources, but it's all open now. They can use any resource they like. Um, Footkin, he's, he's global. The idea is you're trying to reduce your footprint, your carbon footprint on the planet. Um, it was quite beautiful that once COVID hit within 24 hours, the whole globe, all our schools, all the eco schools in the globe had Footkin out there talking about COVID, how, what a virus does, what we should do, what are the key messages. Um, and that's the beauty about a global program that it's one resource that's shared by the globe. Um, so these are just some of the things that we do. Uh, the, the, the lesson plans are for the teachers. If we can give the lessons plans, it saves the teachers a lot of headache and heartache and it's um, uniform right across Australia. And it's in line with the stuff from other countries. So curriculum linked again, water and waste, litter. Grants. This one here is the um, Young Reporters Grant. So this one here, you apply for it. Um, the idea is that um, it's the $500 you get maybe by a video, make a film about sustainability. Then that goes state by state, judged which is the best one in the state, then which is the best nationally, and then which is the best globally. And, and that's a competition that um, some of the global winners are up there. Like I said, in your communities, we link you as a council with your objectives to the broader community. We're not political. We don't charge for our services. Yes, I can't, I don't have the money to travel. But when I fly down to Alice Springs, McDonald's puts me into a car and take me around to their 13 communities and that's the way I can get around. Perhaps you can consider that. But we link the council with the store, with the school, with the rangers and so forth, all right? And this program here, um, the Eco School program is the, the program that we use. Any questions or? Guys, it worries me when you don't ask questions. <laughs> yeah.
uh, they, the, all the other states have a lot of funding. The Northern Territory, we, we, my funding is really limited. Um, I can't travel. Uh, we've got 60, we've only got the 60. But yeah. Oh, look, I, I don't know, but I'm guessing there's, there, there's a lot, you know, when we talk about eco skills, it's a huge part of our, our program now. Um, and there's a lot of uptake, a lot of time spent talking about it. Hi there, my name's Carol Music and I'm from GHD. I'm actually recently new Northern Territory and I'd like to congratulate you on the program that you're offering. I've seen it, similar programs operate in other states of, of Australia and I can understand the tyranny of distance that you've got. Mm. One of the things that COVID seems to have highlighted to people is the use of electronic communication. And I'm just wondering, have you thought a little bit about using yeah, Zoom yeah, or I, other things I, to be I, able to get into the schools a little bit more? I understand yeah. the tyranny of distance and transport costs is huge yep. for the NT. Uh, maybe you can talk a little bit about what you're looking at doing in the future for that one as well. Yeah, we do use the Zoom a lot and that's more from COVID's perspective. But what I miss is I, I when I go into the community, I can... I can see the personalities and, and get a feeling for where the community's at, just to visually see where things are at. You, you really need that. And then to network. I mean, when I talk on Zoom with the communities, I mean, that's the only way I've got to go now. I mean, like I say, if I haven't got people like Demed that come in and pick me up and take me out for a couple of weeks, um, or McDonald Regional Council, um, I talk to them at, on Zoom, and we talk about this, this, and this, and this. But... I don't think it's as cemented and solid as when you speak face to face and say, all right, I'll see you next time and keep it up and all that. So yeah, Zoom is about the, is the only way now, which is a bit disappointing. Yeah, thanks. Um, love your work. Thank you for what you've been doing. This is a bit of a question more perhaps that relates to what you talked about yesterday, but um, I'm quite interested in the, the way waste is um, put out there in the community. And, like, for instance, I know uh, Parks NT seem to have taken all their bins out of National Park, mm. other parks up here, and that seems to be quite successful from mm -hmm. what I've seen with no litter around. Um, in council, we tend to say, you know, as things got busier, we put out more and more and more bins. And, <laughs> I mean, I don't really... I, I wonder what... Oh, I, it's sad, I, I don't, isn't it? I, I, it's I sad. get very... I, I would mm. rather see no bins yeah. because yeah. if somebody goes down the beach front right. and carries their stuff in, yeah. Look, why I used should to... rate payers pay to carry it out? But anyway, I'm just wondering what your... If you've got any comments on, you know, if, if council were to take away all their bins, would it make things worse? <laughs> well, you know, um, going back to the transport issue um it's the same thing we as people when we go into parks we're expected if we take the rubbish in we take the rubbish out if the trucks and the barges are taking stuff in then they should have that corporate social responsibility to take it out so that falls in line with that that's where you know that's what we think anyway um in terms of you've got schools now that are working on having no bins in the school so it's in they've, they've already started this so your schools are already on the ball there um I remember when I started, I used to say, oh, wherever there's rubbish, put... So that was the old way of thinking. Wherever there's rubbish, put a bin. But now it's about, hang on, when we talk in the communities or even in our major hub areas, we say to the kids, if there's no bin, then you hold it until you find a bin. And it's about a responsibility and ownership. And I remember somebody saying to me, geez, hey, how many bins do we have to put out? And that's right. You've got, there is an optimum level, but you're better off, you know, the responsibility and the ownership are on the people. It's not council's job. It's the people. We have to take ownership and responsibility. It's our rubbish. We hold it until we find a bin. And when there is a bin, we put it in. If there are two bins, then we put it in the right bin. And it's doing the right thing. So that's what it's all about, yeah. Yeah, no, look, I, I, your school's already started down that road. It'll be interesting to see how it goes. Well, <laughs> but like I said, your biggest change agent you all have in your communities or council regions are the students, the kids. 
The kids learn. They learn in language. They learn young, and they that that value and that moral can get instilled in them. And they teach the parents. They're the biggest change agent you have. So, I don't know how much you invest in your schools. I don't know. You know, in some of the communities, the relationship with the schools is a bit thin. The turnover is huge. I mean, last year we turned over nearly every teacher on our, on our on our contact list. Couldn't believe it. The turnover is huge. But anyway, schools, they're the biggest change agents you've got. And if you've got them, if you can schmooze them a bit and you've got them, then we'll try and link into to their contacts, get them going. Like I said, the problem I've got is I can't travel. I'm already in the red now. Yeah. <laughs> you know what hurts? What really hurts me is that we run the eco school program. Is there anybody from education here? Quick? No? Okay. We run the eco school program. It's important enough to put in the CEO's report to the minister, but not to give any, put any money towards it. So, um, like I said, it's disappointing when we spoke to the education department about one principle in particular that we felt should be contributing, uh, educating the broader community that they're in, um, that fell on deaf ears. Um, I'm also looking at, I said to the education department, can you give me a teacher with a broken wing so I can go through my eco school program and make sure everything's right, you know, update a few things. And they said, oh, just go on the website and ask, ask the teachers. So the education department, <laughs> It's a funny one, yeah, a real funny one. Like I said, I, I get sponsors by the environment department. Um, they've had to cut costs. That's had some severe effects on my ability to travel. But if it wasn't for the environment department, I wouldn't be here. Anyway, yeah. So your schools, your students, biggest change agent you guys have got. So if you can talk to us, we'll try and work with your schools. It's smart if you want to get effort done through the effort of others, some work done through the efforts of others, your schools are the big achievers, all right? Help change, they'll help change that community. Great, everybody, were there any other questions? Or could we please thank Haymore for his presentation? Awesome. Uh, well, friends, we've hit morning tea for day two. So we're going to have a bit of a break until 11 o'clock. We're back in here for the next lot of presentations for this morning. So morning tea is just going to be a little while while they set it up, but otherwise just go and have a chat, go network, go and talk about some of the things you've heard today that are useful to take back into your work. And we'll be back at 11 o'clock. Thanks, everybody.